Are you planning to fish offshore this summer? If so, stay tuned to this video because it can save you hours of wasted time trying to locate offshore schools of bass in the summertime. Let's get into it. I took a trip yesterday to Lake Ten Killer in Oklahoma to fish with my buddy Jimmy from the Bass Fishing Declassified YouTube channel. It was the 1st of June, and when we got to the lake, water temperatures were 80 degrees. Whenever I think June and 80 degree water, I think offshore schools of bass on summer structure. And when we got to the lake, that was my initial game plan. Graph these offshore ledges to try to find big schools of fish setting up in 10 to 20 feet of water. Most of the time when you get to the lake this time of year, you're going to be able to find at least a few schools of fish. Usually those bigger groups of fish are going to start schooling up first on the upper end of the lake where the water is dirtier. That's because the dirty water warms up quicker. Then you'll find more schools developing as the summer goes on in the midsection of the lake and the lower end. We decided to start further up the lake in that upper end, trying to find some of these schools that were setting up on ledges and points and any sort of sharp drop off we could find. However, after graphing for about two to three hours, we really couldn't find any big groups of fish. There were a few scattered fish on these ledges that we could see on 2D sonar and down imaging, and there was bait fish out there as well. What we see a lot of times in June is that the bass are either going to be full on in their summer mode or they're still going to be in that post-spawn mode. And it really depends on the year. If you get a lot of rain one year, which keeps the water high in the bushes, those bass will stay up shallow longer and they won't set up in those big schools as early in the year. It also depends on the weather you've had, the temperature, the moon phases, all these different things can impact when those bass actually pull off the bank get offshore and start setting up in those big groups of fish. Now in some parts of the country, like on the Tennessee River and Lake Gunnersville, there's already giant schools of fish offshore that are set up and you can just absolutely crush them right now. However, in Oklahoma where I was fishing yesterday, the fish hadn't grouped up fully in those schools. I wanna show you a few sonar screenshots to show you what I'm talking about and what these schools of fish look like before they fully develop. This is a very important piece of information to have because a lot of times the fish will be out there on those ledges and you can see a few fish here and there, but you're just not gonna catch very many good ones and it's not really worth your time grinding out on the graph trying to find those schools of fish when you're seeing images like this. Basically what you'll find is that there's going to be a few fish scattered here and there, maybe one fish every 20 to 30 feet across a ledge. You'll also find that if you regraph the same area two different times, those fish will have moved. Whenever those fish are really set up on the ledges, they're going to be staying in one particular spot or at least in a general area, let's say a 10 to 15 yard area. And when you regraph over the area, you'll see 10, 15, 20 fish stacked up in that same small zone in an area that's about the size of your boat. Now, when you find these areas, it's usually very easy to get bit and you should be able to catch multiple fish off those spots, especially if you're fishing earlier in the summer or in the late spring, so like May and June time. Once you get later into June and July, these schools get a lot more pressure from other anglers and they become harder to catch, but you'll still see these bigger groups, especially on these major community holes, obvious ledges and points and stuff like that. However, on this fishing day yesterday, we weren't seeing those fish grouped up tight into big schools. We did see a few groups, so let's say four to eight bass that we did try to fish, and we caught a couple fish on football jigs and a few other baits, but we didn't find any good ones, and we only caught one fish per spot that we found. Now, as these water temperatures warm up and more fish pull off the bank, the spots that we graphed yesterday are going to start filling up with more and more and more fish. And what you'll find is that maybe in two weeks, the same spots we fished yesterday that had four to eight fish on them might have 20 to 50 fish on them. Right now, these fish are slowly trickling out of the creeks, getting to these summer spots, and it's actually very useful to know what this type of situation looks like on your graph, because if you're preparing for a tournament or a fishing trip two to three weeks from now, you can start to get a sense of which areas are gonna be holding fish offshore, but that aren't quite fully developed yet. This gives you an edge over your competition because you basically can predict where these big groups of fish are gonna be without actually seeing them on your graph. And a lot of guys will just graph over these spots, see a couple of fish and completely ignore them. And you know better because you've seen this video and you'll know that more fish will be coming to that area. 
But because the fish on Lake Tenkiller weren't set up on these main lake structure spots yet, we had to call an audible and start finding some fish that were transitioning from the backs of the creeks out to those structure spots. The way I do this is pick a major creek that has a nice summer structure spot out in front of it. It's even better if you can graph that summer structure spot first and see a few fish set up there and you can kind of get a sense that the fish will be moving there in the next couple of weeks, but they haven't made it there yet. Then you basically backtrack your way into the creek. Start at that summer structure spot and then graph your way into the creek, working your way from the main lake to the first half of the creek to the back half of the creek. You don't really need to get too concerned about what you see on the map. A lot of times these fish in this post-spawn period won't be setting up on these hard breaks or these obvious contour map spots, places like humps or ridges or these really obvious areas. A lot of times they'll just be set up on these flat banks on isolated pieces of cover, whether that's a rock pile, a brush pile, things like that. This is what we did on Lake Tenkiller, and we basically started at one of these summer structure spots, graphed our way into the creek, and we actually made our way around the other side of this little creek or pocket until we found this really nice rocky ridge. On the map, this doesn't look like a super obvious spot. It doesn't jump off the map by any means. You can see that there's a little bit of a rise and a small high spot if you have the right mapping card in, but it's definitely not the most obvious spot in this area. However, when you graph it with your side imaging, down imaging, and 2D sonar, you can see a very nice rocky ridge that is naturally occurring rock that runs out into the middle of the lake. After graphing over it a couple times, you could actually see several fish stacked up, actually more than several, a lot of fish stacked up on this offshore rocky spot. Now, this is not a spot that the bass are gonna set up in all summer. This is definitely a transitional area where they're gonna set up between the bank spots they were using in the spring to spawn and the summer structure spots they're heading to. These fish may only be on the spot for another one to two weeks at max, but we hit it right on time on this fishing trip and found a group of fish stacked up there. One thing I did wanna share with you guys that I thought was really interesting is when we initially got to the lake, we chose the section of lake that we were going to focus on using a new feature in the deep dive app called the best areas feature. Basically what this feature does is give you the best section of the lake based on historical tournament data, depending on how you filter down the map. I filtered it to offshore areas without grass on this fishing day. And I started by selecting the summer season because the water temperatures were 80 degrees. But after determining the fish weren't fully in that summer pattern, I switched over to the post spawn period and it gave me the mid section of the lake on the main lake. And actually here is the exact spot where we found those fish on that rocky spot. And it was really cool that we were able to dial in at least a general section of the lake using the data in the deep dive app and then narrow down exactly where we were going to fish with the electronics, with our baits and things like that. If you guys do want to get some help figuring out the best general area to start targeting on your lake, make sure to download the deep dive app today and check out our new best areas feature. It's a really cool deal. And we have it on a ton of lakes across the country. You can install the app on the Apple app store or the Google play store. So definitely check that out. Now to actually get these fish to bite, we started out by fishing a swing head in about eight to 12 feet of water, just off the tip of this rocky point. We were throwing a three quarter ounce big bite bait swing head with a big bite bait quarantine craw on the back. This is a sneaky little swing head bait. A lot of guys like throwing biffle bugs or craw style baits, but this quarantine craw is kind of a skinnier worm with just a few uh, little appendages that kick at the bottom. And I find that it's really effective, especially when you're fishing in kind of this post-spawn mood, the bass aren't super aggressive. They're a little bit finicky, which is kind of what we found these fish were doing on this trip. We caught several largemouth on the swing head and then really stopped getting bit. And it was interesting because we were seeing a lot of smallmouth jumping and surfacing around the boat. Lake Tenkiller has largemouth and smallmouth bass. And you could see on the live scope and even when we graphed over the spot with 2D that there were a few fish that were suspended up over these rocks. My first instinct to get these fish to bite was to pick up a top water. The water's clear enough and we're only fishing like eight, 10 feet of water that you can call those fish up over the top of the structure to eat a top water like this mega bass giant dog X. 
I threw that over the top of that rock pile 10 or 15 times, but didn't get a single bite. And then I tried to fish another bait that would kind of target those suspended bass, which is a little swim bait here. This is just a big bite baits, 2.8 inch pro swimmer on a 516 sounds jig head. And I was just reeling that thing over the rocks and trying to keep it in that, let's say four to eight foot zone. I would bump the rocks, I would reel it higher in the water column, just trying to target those suspended smallmouth. And usually that gets the job done, but for whatever reason, these smallmouth were very, very picky. Finally, I dug into my rod box and pulled out the hover rig by Core Tackle. And you guys are probably tired of hearing me talk about the hover rig. And I actually didn't even have it on the deck of the boat today because I didn't want to make every single video with the hover rig. I wanted to, experiment with different baits and you know show you guys a lot of different techniques but for whatever reason the hover rig was the deal on this fishing trip i was pairing that with a four inch strike king caffeine chat junior and this is the eighth ounce three aught hover rig i basically threw that thing over the top of the rock piles let it sink down very slowly this bait probably falls about a foot per second maybe three quarters of a foot per second and it just kind of glided through the water column I would hop it and twitch it, kind of like you fish a normal fluke up shallow, and the smallmouth got all over it. It was interesting because I ended up catching three really nice smallmouth, two and three quarter pounders, on the hover rig, but I never caught a single largemouth. On the other hand though, when we were throwing the swing head, every single fish on the spot was a largemouth, and it seemed like those largemouth were set up more tight to the bottom, and they were biting the swing head, and then those smallmouth were suspended up over the top of those rocks and were eating the hover rig. This is why it's really important to experiment with a lot of different baits when you're fishing offshore spots, because sometimes certain fish are going to be set up in one way and want one presentation, and other fish are gonna be set up in a completely different way and they want something else. This also helps when you're fishing around a lot of other anglers because you can go in right behind a lot of anglers that just got done fishing a spot with let's say your standard swing heads or a swim bait and stuff like that. And you can pick up the hover rig, go behind them and catch those fish that they really weren't targeting at all. And it's really cool that we have a bait now like the hover rig that has a different presentation to anything else I really throw. And it's given me a big advantage, I feel like, on a lot of these offshore spots, especially in this post-spawn period, because I can go right behind anglers, fish basically community holes that are getting a lot of other fishing pressure, and I can still catch them on the hover rig. Now, there are other baits that probably would have worked if I had them in the boat, like a spy bait. That was one of the things I did want to try. I didn't have any in the boat. I fixed that now. That could be something I could have tried. I may have thrown a jerk bait and got a few bites as well, and I just didn't have one tied on. I just had the hover rig there, so that's what I threw. But basically, you can experiment with a lot of different baits. I'm not saying these are the only baits that would ever work, but definitely try baits that target different levels of the water column the surface of the water, the middle of the water column, and the bottom of the lake when you find these offshore spots because you can trigger different types of fish to bite. This was an extreme case on this fishing day because we had one species, the largemouth, that bit the bottom baits, and another species, the smallmouth, that would bite the hover rig in the middle of the water column. But the same thing goes for different moods of a largemouth or different moods of smallmouth depending on the lakes you're on. The moral of the story though on this fishing day is that we kind of jumped the gun going to those summer structure spots and wasted probably about three hours of our day. I say wasted, but really we spent three hours of the day trying to determine what the fish were doing. And then after graphing for that long, we finally determined that these fish weren't out there and allowed us to eliminate those main lake structure spots and move into the creeks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something about this transition period between post-spawn and summer and how to locate some offshore bass. If you enjoyed the video, leave a comment down below and also leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Thanks for checking out this video. We'll see y'all next one.